Kia ora koutou. It's a privilege to present the 2021 Rector's Address, although of course it's in rather different circumstances to normal. While last year we were able to have some people attend our prize giving, this year unfortunately that cannot be the case. Instead our prize giving and the presentation of awards has been split into a number of different virtual presentations due to the restrictions placed on us by COVID-19. So the year has again been an interrupted one. And for many of our young men, the, interrupt, the interruption stopped them in their tracks. Those who had for the second year in a row events and tournaments cancelled were incredibly disappointed. That the chance for them to represent their school at a high level, particularly for those in their final year, was taken away from them, and it was a difficult pill to swallow. But swallow it we must because we had no choice. Although it seemed to me that at one stage in Term 3, we were cancelling events on a daily basis. This year's lockdown, for those of us fortunate to have been outside the Auckland region, was different, I think, to 2020. It seems that last year, people were on the surface at least more resilient and more positive after lockdown. My impression is that this isn't the case in 2021. It seems that there is more anger, more resentment. There has been a rise in selfishness, an intolerance, and an antisocial behaviour. There have been some who have used COVID as an excuse to act inexcusably. It has been disheartening to see the treatment New Zealanders living overseas and who are desperate to come home have received on social media from fellow Kiwis, so many of whom have shown an absolute lack of empathy and compassion, but they don't care because it doesn't affect them. For many, the ability to think of someone other than themselves appears to be a concept rather too difficult for them to appreciate. Because it seems more and more everything has become about me. Last year the message to be kind and considerate appeared to resonate with many New Zealanders, but that seems to have fallen by the wayside this time round, as more and more people seem to care only for themselves and their own opinion. There has been a real undercurrent of meanness, mean-spirited folk who cannot see things from another person's perspective. And this has been fueled by the media, media of all kinds, but social especially. Its popularity and its provision of a platform for the most staggeringly absurd and vacuous opinion trumpeted as fact means so many accept what they see as gospel. Although quite what it is I find unfathomable, given social media is not exactly known for its intellectually rigorous discourse. The moaners, the whingers, the crackpots and the loonies get all the attention. It has become something of a rarity to see something good, something positive that restores your faith in human nature. Like the touching story of the young mother in Tomanui who stopped to help a desperate young woman and her baby. An incredible act of kindness and compassion. That act of selflessness stands as a beacon in an increasingly desolate landscape of anger, arrogance, intolerance, selfishness and greed. On a lighter note, British comedian and actor Tom Walker has created a character called Jonathan Pye, a fictional political correspondent who frequently rants about politics and politicians between takes while out filming news segments. His character has gained widespread popularity in recent years as his monologues sit closer and closer to home. Like the Shakespearean fool, Walker's character serves to provide comic relief, but through the comedy emerges truth, and sometimes even a lesson. High rails against whinges. Pre-COVID, he said, we live in the most inclusive, prosperous, progressive society ever in human history, but we behave like we've never had it so bad. Political correctness is another of his takes. His comments about the television executive who was fired for using an offensive word at a meeting that was called to discuss the use of offensive words and those directed towards a popular internet search engine for removing the egg from their salad emoji for fear of upsetting vegans are very entertaining. The removal of authors' names from literature awards because their books depicted and used the language of their time and the world of wokeness can't be having that. Pai says, stop sanitising and denying the past to make yourself look good. It's revisionist, he says, and more sinisterly, rather than willing. But it is his lack of tolerance for the apparently tolerant who show a lack of tolerance and who cannot see the irony that resonates more and more. He talks about people who have an obsession for diversity as long as it 
It isn't diversity of opinion, of course, and the social media grandstanders for whom any divergence from their opinion will not be tolerated. The fact that a character created by a comedian is able to articulate what so many others would agree with, but who are afraid to do so publicly, says a lot about the era of cancel culture and intolerance. But then again, comedians have always pushed boundaries in an attempt to get people to look at what is going on around them while making us laugh. And a sense of humour is needed more than ever these days, along with empathy, kindness and common sense, if we are to move ahead and rebuild an increasingly fractured and divided society. But to the school, we are again indebted to this year as we are every year to our hard work and staff, both teaching and non-teaching. The hard work in the classroom is appreciated, although sometimes unrewarded when young men fail to act upon advice or even instruction. Our non-teaching staff also work hard to ensure our school is able to function as it does. To those staff who have contributed to the co-curricular life of the school with enthusiasm and commitment, I would like, like to take this opportunity to thank you for the vital role you play in providing our young men with a balanced education. To those staff who are leaving us at the end of this year, I would like to acknowledge their contribution, thank them for all they have done for the school and wish them all the very best for the future. In particular, I would like to thank Mrs Dickinson who joined the staff in 1982. Mrs Dickinson has served the school and countless young men well over the last 40 years. And to dedicate 40 years to one school is remarkable. So we thank Mrs Dickinson for all she has done throughout her time with us. And we wish you all the best for a well-earned retirement. Mrs Rankin is also leaving us at the end of the year after 22 years with us in the English and Learning Support Departments. Both Mrs Rankin and Mrs Dickinson have done a superb job in the roles that they have and it was a privilege to be able to present both with the Palmerston North Boys High School academic style recently, which recognises the staff members' significant contribution to the academic life of the school over many years, and both were fully deserved recipients. I would like to thank fellow management team members for their continued commitment and support. Mr Atkin is outstanding as Deputy Rector, even more so this year, when he stepped in as Acting Rector while I was away on sabbatical, and he had to deal with some interesting situations. Mrs Gibbs, Binder, Sinclair and Truter, thank you for your continued support and commitment. I enjoy working with you very much, and I'll be very sorry to see Mr Truter leaving the team at the end of the year, although he will be remaining on staff. Mr Truter is an integral part of the team. He is loyal, professional, and particularly adept at negotiating issues with staff. Mr Truter really cares about the school, and has worked with absolute dedication for many years as a senior master to ensure the school standards are maintained. It has been a real highlight and a privilege for me to work with Mr Truter on the senior management team and I will miss his contributions to our meetings very much. I would also like to give special thanks to Mrs Sinclair. I suspect she enjoyed term two without the added burden of organising me and she often goes above and beyond the call of duty. Her contributions to the management meetings are most appreciated. Mrs Sinclair continues to do a fine job redirecting inquiries from parents who want to talk to the rector about the fact that their son should have been picked for the A-team because he's obviously the best. Mr McAnulty and his property team continue to do a superb job, often frustrated as we all are at the crumbs we receive from the ministry property table and often frustrated with young men who treat their school environment with scant respect. He leads his team superbly to ensure things get done around the school. Thank you to Mrs Wenham and her team and the CRD office who do a fantastic job. The old adage of if you want something done, ask the busiest person is apt. In this case, Mrs Wenham's capacity for work is incredible and the CRD team have made such a difference to our school. Visiting a number of schools on my sabbatical and hearing about the sometimes fraught relationships between schools and their boards made me appreciate even more how fortunate our school is to have such an outstanding board of trustees. Mr Michael Lawrence is a great board chair and I thank him and the board for their ongoing support and genuine interest. They want the best for the school and for our young men. I would also like to thank the PTA for all their time, commitment and support as well as the Old Boys Association and the Education Foundation Trust for their continued support of our school and our young men. 
Jacob Dredge has done an outstanding job in a challenging year, as he briefly is an articulate and thoughtful young man who is a superb representative of our school. Jacob is a consummate all-rounder who has contributed hugely to the school throughout his time at Boys High. And I would also like to thank all of this year's Prefect Group for their support, their enthusiasm and their work. Thank you too to our school community for your support throughout the year. I would also like to thank Mrs Bowie and my family as I do in this forum every year. It is difficult to articulate just how much I appreciate everything she does to support me and I certainly enjoyed the chance to spend more time with the family during term two, although it was telling that Mrs Bowie was just as keen as I was to be to go back to school. Finally, to those who are leaving 100 years ago, the Palmerstonian wrote, to all who are alumni leaving, their alma mater extends her sincerest wishes that the precepts heard within her walls and the practice followed may have fitted them to enter with steady confidence and high hopes the threshold of whatever sphere of duty they have chosen in the larger world now opening out before them. And we send this year's leaders out with the same good wishes as the school did in 1921. Gentlemen, thank you for your contributions, in most cases over the last five years, and I wish you all the very best for your life after Palmy Boys. Many of you will be nervous about what life holds for you after leaving the relative safety of our school, and that's quite natural. Some of you will take some time before you take the next big step, and some of you need to take that time. You don't have to make your big decisions just yet. And so remember, gentlemen, there is a tide in the affairs of men which, taken at the flood, leads on to fortune. Omitted, all the voyage of their life is bound in shallows and in miseries. On such a full sea are we now afloat, and we must take the current when it serves or lose our ventures. So, gents, in other words, once you've given your best in the upcoming exams and then head off, Take your chances when you can and enjoy the journey. Juniors, you have a wee bit of time ahead of you until the end of the school year, but I would like to wish all friends and families of the Palmerston North Boys High School community a safe and happy festive season and have an enjoyable summer break. Thank you.